Hey guys, so recently a 24 year old Belgian woman was approved for euthanasia because of her depression. But before we get into details, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and hit that notification bell if you don't want to miss any of our videos. Okay, so Elian Vavad dreamed of becoming a theatre actress. However, this dream was shattered when the entrance exam for a drama course proved to be too difficult for her. This led to a severe depression that lasted a few years. Three years into the depression, she applied for euthanasia, which surprisingly was approved. Another 23-year-old Belgian woman, Shanti Dacord, was approved for euthanasia after struggling with PTSD and depression due to an ISIS bomb detonation that she witnessed when she was just 7 years old. A report revealed that since euthanasia was legalized in 2002, more than 27,000 people have died by euthanasia in Belgium. In 2022 alone, the number of deaths by euthanasia increased by 10% and accounted for 2.5% of all deaths in the country. But this is still lower than the world's euthanasia Asia hotspot Quebec, where 7% of all deaths are because of assisted suicide. Though Canada legalized euthanasia much later than Belgium or the Netherlands, they have normalized it at a much faster rate. Here's a clip released by MADE, Canada's euthanasia program. Last breaths are sacred. When I imagine my final days, I see bubbles. I see the ocean. I see music. Even now, as I seek help to end my life, there is still so much beauty. You just have to be brave enough to see it. Man, they're doing their best to make it seem so positive and uplifting, like it's a beautiful vacation experience or an escape. What used to be meant to put an end to the suffering of the terminally ill has now become the go-to treatment for the homeless and depressed. Here's a clip about Catherine Mentler, who was offered euthanasia as a treatment option for mental illness. A 37-year-old Vancouverite is speaking out after a clinician at Vancouver General Hospital apparently suggested medical assistance in dying to her during a mental health crisis. On June 2nd, Catherine Mentler checked into the Access and Assessment Center at Vancouver General Hospital because of suicidal thoughts and left deeply disturbed after she claims the clinician told her the mental health system was overwhelmed and went on to question if she'd ever considered medical assistance in dying. But like I didn't come there to, to get advice on how to die. I came there because I was in a crisis and I wanted to live and I wanted help and support to live. According to Mentler, the clinician described the technicalities of medical assistance in dying in detail, highlighting how patients are sedated prior to receiving a lethal dose. I've had nightmares where I'm like under anesthesia and people are like, we're just going to give you some injections, it's going to be fine, it's going to be over soon. I'm still scared to go back to like VGH or like the Access and Assessment Center. Vancouver Coastal Health has shared their deepest apologies with Mentler, and the entire interaction has sparked debate and concern as the Liberal government prepares to expand medical assistance and dying eligibility for those suffering slowly from mental illness next March. Man, imagine wanting to get help for depression and being told, sorry, we don't have the infrastructure for your mental health crisis, but killing yourself is an option. Where are the therapists or psychiatrists? What happened to trying to get people the help they need to overcome depression so that they don't end up killing themselves? Mentler went on to share that even though she never considered assisted suicide, she had thought of overdosing on medication. However, the doctor advised that trying to commit suicide on her own through overdose could lead to brain damage and other complications if it failed, while medically assisted suicide would be more comfortable as she would be sedated throughout the process. I mean, what kind of doctor is this? Shouldn't the reply have been something like, no, don't kill yourself, we'll get you the therapy you need or I have some resources to help you overcome your suicidal thoughts. Not, oh, don't kill yourself, let me kill you or so it's more comfortable. How is this the recommended line of treatment for a mental health crisis? But even for those with physical illness which, although not terminal, severely affects their quality of life, it's easier to apply for euthanasia than to get medical support for their illness. Rosie Finlay, a 33-year-old Canadian quadriplegic, single mom raising two kids with disabilities, went viral when she shared how for her it was harder to obtain disability support than to apply for MAID. Here's the clip. I have 12 days left on my medical assistance in dying application here in the province of Ontario. I'm a quadriplegic single mom raising two kids with disabilities and I've spent the last 79 days 
trying to raise as much awareness as I possibly can. There is a huge and detrimental discrepancy that exists in the supports that are available to disabled Ontarians. The fact that it takes six to eight months to receive disability support and only 91 days to receive medical assistance in dying based on the fact that I have a permanent disability and a decreased quality of life, but my quality of life is decreased based on the level of support that I receive. Things like personal care support. I've had so many people focused on, you're choosing this and you're leaving your children. And the reality is this. The last year and a half, I have continued to get very sick. And every time I get sick, I get more sick than the time I was before. And so currently I have acute kidney pain, fever, chills, body tremors, splitting headache, muscle spasms, just not okay, uh, extreme nausea. So I've spent the last few days just feeling like absolute crap, not being very useful to my kids. Isn't the government supposed to help people live? It's crazy to think that she would have been dead for six months before the disability support would have even been approved. However, not everyone is on board with maid's diagnosis system. Canadian Conservative Party leader Pierre Poilivre has been consistently speaking out against the maid program. Here's a clip from a speech he made challenging the maid program. After eight years of growing poverty and desperation, more and more Canadians are suffering with depression. Some of them are going to food banks asking for help ending their lives, not because they're sick, but because life has become so miserable and they want to end their lives altogether. This government has suggested veterans should end their lives instead of getting help that they need. And now they've announced that a year from today, they will introduce measures to, to, to end the lives of people who are depressed. Will they recognize that we need to treat depression and give people hope for a better life rather than ending their lives? He's right. The government should be doing their best to improve the quality of life for their people. People are suffering with depression or hunger or poverty and instead of providing them with the resources they need to overcome that struggle, they are given the option to kill themselves. But why would the governments encourage assisted suicide as the preferred option? While assisted suicide might be promoted as the compassionate, loving and merciful solution for the suffering, the harsh truth is that euthanasia could have more to do with being an economical solution than the most ethical one. Now, think about the costs involved in excellent health care, geriatric home care and retirement homes for senior citizens, palliative care for the elderly and dying and adequate support and assistance for the disabled, therapy for treating depression and other mental health struggles or providing homes for the homeless. It would be much easier and more cost effective to just propose euthanasia as the one size fits all solution to all these problems. In 2017, a study conducted by University of Calgary researchers proposed that Canada had the potential to reduce end of life care expenses by $139 million annually through the legalization of MAID, specifically by saving on palliative care. At the time the study was published, Canada had not yet planned to extend MAID to those with mental illness. But by next year, when it is legalized, imagine how much money the government would save by ending the lives of its citizens. This should not be acceptable. The government needs to give people hope to live, not hope to die. Keeping someone alive shouldn't be a profit or loss problem. They should do everything it takes to keep people alive and healthy instead of making death the easiest escape route. Especially for people suffering with mental health. Mental illness can be complex but given enough time and support, people can overcome them. Most people experience a time in their life where it seems almost impossible to survive. Obviously that's not the best time to allow someone to make such a life altering decision. Especially since their judgement might be impaired by their illness. Doctors are supposed to commit their lives to preserving and enhance life. Euthanasia, on the other hand, focuses on intentionally ending it. The mental health of an individual does not diminish their value or the protection owed to them. In the 1980 document titled Declaration on Euthanasia, the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith stated, It is necessary to state firmly once more than nothing and no one can in any way permit the killing of an innocent human being, whether a fetus or an embryo, an infant or an adult, an old person 
person or one suffering from an incurable disease or a person who is dying furthermore no one is permitted to ask for this act of killing either for himself or herself or for another person entrusted to his or her care nor can he or she consent to it either explicitly or implicitly nor can any authority legitimately recommend or permit such an action for it is a question of the violation of the divine law and offense against the dignity of the human person a crime against life and an attack on humanity it goes on to explain that even when the person is experiencing intolerable pain and anguish what they are asking for is not the desire for euthanasia but an anguish plea for help and love what a sick person needs besides medical care is love the human and supernatural warmth with which the sick person can and ought to be surrounded by all those close to him or her parents and children doctors and nurses so what do you think about this should euthanasia be permitted for those struggling with mental illness is assisted suicide the more compassionate and dignified solution for those who are suffering let us know in the comments below also if you like this video let us know by liking and subscribing to our channel Until next time.